show has begun, ladies and gentlemen. We're making sure we live on, making sure we live on all platforms right now. We are live on Facebook. We live on Periscope. Is y'all checking in on Periscope? Uh, shout the stuff out in the comment section. Periscope. Tell me your name and where you checking in from. Instagram is giving me this. Why are they changing this? Changing this app up? I have no idea. But as y'all checking in, shout the cells out in the comment section. Mozart Gates is in the house. Cupertino is in the house. As y'all come in, shout yourselves out. Facebook, if y'all in there, you can shout yourself out too. I'll give a couple shout outs and we're gonna get right into this. We starting this live. Later than I usually start my live, but listen, we get it in either way. One way or another, we're gonna get it in. That's the game. So hope everybody's had a great week thus far. Today is, I'm looking at the date, Thursday, October the 22nd. All right, we got less than two weeks. To the presidential election. I know everybody's excited. That's not the topic here today, but that is a, a tent pole event. We got nine days till Halloween. What about that? That's, that's something everybody can feel positive about Halloween. I don't think anybody has any negative feelings about Halloween. Election day, some people might have some negative feelings because you might be concerned that your candidate of choice is not going to win. And then if the other candidate wins, that would be terrible for you because you didn't you didn't root for the other guy, but it's all good. We could we could forget about that. We could at least enjoy Halloween. And then everybody could get to worrying about the presidential election the next day because Halloween's on a Saturday. And you got Sunday, Monday, and all day Tuesday to worry about the presidency. And then on Wednesday, I guess we'll know who won. Maybe. Maybe we'll know who won on Wednesday. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. We got Ryan checking in from the Philippines. Shout out to the Philippines. We got Ben. He said he loves Halloween. I appreciate that. Mark said it's crazy. The year is almost over. That's a fact. That's a fact. We almost got we creeping up on only 60 days left in the year. We got Just checking in from Brooklyn. So everybody who is not familiar with who you're watching right now, my name is Dre Baldwin. Many know me as Dre all day. I'm a former nine-year professional athlete. I'm the author of 20, <clears throat> excuse me, 27 publications that y'all call books, including this book right here called Working Your Game Hardcover. I'm going to tell you how to get this later. And this book right here, The Mirror of Motivation. I'm going to tell you how to get this book for free at the end of this presentation I'm about to do. So if you want this book, physical book free, just stick around to the end. I'm gonna tell you how to get this book free, shipped to your doorstep, anywhere in the world that you live. But what I do, people sometimes ask me, Jerry, what do you do for a living? It's kind of hard to, to put what I do into a box. You know, so I can't call myself a, a motivational speaker, even though some people might watch me from the motivation. I don't just call myself an author because I do a lot more than write books. I told you I used to play ball, but I don't play ball anymore, so I don't call myself an athlete. Now, I could call myself a thought leader, but then there's so many other corny motherfuckers calling themselves that that I don't want to put myself in that category either. So I don't give myself a category. I'm uncategorized. All right? But let me tell you what I did, what I've done. I created this whole philosophy that's called work on your game. And what it's about is taking the mental tools that you need to succeed in the sports world and showing you how those same tools can be applied to business and life. That's what I do. So somebody, anybody asks you what does Dre Baldwin do, you just tell them what I just told you. All right, The mental tools you need to be in the top 1% of sports and applying those to business and life. Now, I do that through several different ways. I got a podcast, I write books, I write, I do blogs, I be on social media, I do professional speaking, I do coaching, I do consulting. We got a new program coming out very, very soon. Before the end of this month of October, we got a new program we're gonna be launching. Y'all will hear about that very soon. And all that encompasses this whole philosophy of working your game. So when I do these live streams here, what I do is I take some <clears throat> element from within the work on your game philosophy, and there are a lot of elements that can go into this. And I take one piece out of it and I give you all a quick presentation on that. I give you all some points, some takeaways, some calls to action, some things that you can do. And I tell you how you can get this book for free. So that's what we about to do right here. So as y'all are checking in, we got Musty Idris checking in from Toronto. Shout out to Toronto. Shout out to Drake. Shout out to the Raptors. Now, topic here today is how to never be underrated or how to stop being underrated. So anybody watching this who feels like, your skill level and your performance level is higher than the perception of your skill and performance level or the level that you're at in your career, you feel like you're better than where you're actually at right now, I'm gonna tell you some things you can do so that you can raise your rating. So if you'd rather be overrated, and sometimes people call you overrated as a, as like a, to knock you down, right? Oh, this person's not as good as they say. Well, listen, wouldn't it be better to be overrated and be getting more than what you're worth than to be underrated and getting less what you're worth, I think? That would make sense. I think everybody would be happy with that setup and you be able to deal with the criticism. You can cry, you can wipe your tears with the money that you're making. So all that being said, I'm gonna tell you three ways. I got three here, one, two, three ways that you can stop being underrated in life. You wanna raise your rating. First of all, let's get a definition of what 
underrate means. It means to underestimate the extent, value, or importance of. So if you feel like your extent, value, and importance is not being properly weighted, you feel like people are not giving you your proper respect, follow what I'm about to give you right now. Number one thing you do to stop being underrated is toot your own horn. What does that mean? Toot your own horn is a euphemism. I don't mean you need to go get a saxophone and start learning how to play. Toot your own horn means let people know how good you are. It means broadcast the news that you are actually good at what you do. Letting people know how good you are is not bragging, is not being cocky, is not arrogance. It is the news. Every single day, there are people who have a full-time job to come on a camera somewhere or get, a, get into a newspaper or write on their phone and let everybody else in the world know what's going on, right? We call that the news. The New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, even ESPN, Fox. What is their job? All they do is give you the news. USA Today, New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times. All they do every day is tell you what's going on. Who's doing what, who's good, who's bad, what you should care about, what you shouldn't care about, you know, what we went and looked into so you don't have to do it for yourself. We did it on your behalf. All that is is reporting the news. Letting people know how good you are is just reporting the news. It is not a bad thing. It is not something to be avoided. If you've been socialized and conditioned to believe you should never talk positively about yourself because that'll make you seem arrogant and cocky, all right, you should extinguish that thought, okay? Because the only way anybody's going to know that you're actually good is if you let them know. If you don't tell anybody that you're good and there's nobody out there screaming your name from the top of a building on your behalf, then how's anybody going to know that you're good? So you got to be willing to let people know. Sometimes in life, it makes sense to be the quietest person in the room, and sometimes it makes sense for you to start making noise, okay? If you you gotta understand that your rating, that the way that people perceive you in life is 100% just about the way that they choose to look at you. It has nothing to do with an actual analysis of your skill and your game and your ability. That is not how people get really, that's not really the way that people get judged. You don't get judged by your actual skill. People do not actually analyze what you can actually do. They just go off how they feel about you. That's it, people just go off feel. All right, we got an election coming up next week or in two weeks. Who are you voting for in the election? You're not voting for whoever you choose to vote for. It has nothing to do with their policies, for the most part. It has nothing to do with their tax plan, for the most part. It has nothing to do with what they're actually going to do when they get into office or what bills they're going to sign or what laws they're going to put forth. It has nothing to do with that, for the most part. For the most part, when you choose somebody to vote for, you're voting for them based on how you feel about them. Period. So if you feel good about this guy and you don't like that guy, then you choose the guy you feel good about. And if it's the other way around, then you choose the other guy. That's it. That's the way that 98% of people vote. You just choose the person that you like. When I was in high school, we had class elections, and this girl said, this ain't nothing but a popularity contest. And nothing has changed. In life, your rating is based on how popular you are in the eyes of the people who make the ratings. So if you want your perception to go up in their eyes, you have to let them know what that perception needs to be. The perception of you doesn't start with what other people think about you. It starts with what you think about you and then what you subsequently say about you. What you say about you is what other people will hear about you and what they hear is what they will repeat. Most people in life do not analyze information before they go repeat it. They go hear something. They don't even consider if it makes sense or if it's factual. They don't fact check it. They just go repeat anything that they heard. This is how we got the fake news industry, right? We got this whole concept of fake news because people do actually make up fake news and then they just go spread it. And then somebody else says it, then somebody else says it, and now all of a sudden people start believing it because they keep hearing it from other people. Nobody has actually checked whether it's actually true or not, and it doesn't even matter. And the same thing that applies to fake news, you can apply to yourself. Now hopefully what you're saying about yourself is actually true so you can back it up. But the whole point stands here, okay? You wanna change the perception of you, change how you talk about yourself. Number two thing you can do to stop being underrated in life, find a stage. What I mean by find the stage is you need to take the skills that you already have. This is the quickest hack right here. All right. The quickest hack for you to get from this level to this level in life, to go from level two to a level eight without changing skill at all. All right. Without changing your skill level at all. Here's all you got to do. Take what you are doing now at the level two and just start doing it for a different group of people. Get seen by somebody else. Take what you're doing now. Take the current work you're doing and do it in a different place. And all of a sudden, you're a superstar. I heard, I think it was Steve Harvey. I saw, some, I said, I saw somebody had posted the Steve Harvey quote. Y'all know Steve Harvey, right? The comedian, kings of comedy. I think he does what, Family Feud now. He got his own TV show. Steve Harvey said, when I used to, he said when he was broke and he was just a struggling comedian trying to get on, he told the exact same jokes 
that he was telling when he was getting paid you know, $25,000 a show. Nothing changed. He was doing the exact same jokes he was doing before. The only thing that changed was the stage that he was doing the jokes on. When the stage changes, your perception changes. So if you want your rating to go up, all you got to do is take the same skills you already got, the same game you already have, and start showing that game to a different audience of people. When I was in college, for example, I told you I played basketball overseas. I played at a Division III college, which is the third tier of college sports. Most athletes don't go pro from D3. Now, when I played D3, did anybody really know who I was? I graduated from college. I didn't have a big resume. I wasn't you know, on anybody's scouting report or anything like that. Then I went to an exposure camp. And the exposure camp is basically a job fair for athletes where you get to show your game. I showed my game at the exposure camp. And because I showed my game at the exposure camp, all of a sudden now I had a different name. I had the same skills as before. I mean, I got a little bit better, but I had the, pretty much the same skill set that I had in college. The difference was now I had shown those same skills instead of showing them to a bunch of random people on a D3 campus. I showed them to some scouts at an exposure camp who could actually get players signed pro deals. Now, all of a sudden I had a name. All of a sudden I had a, a brand. Now, all of a sudden I had opportunities that I didn't have before. Only thing that changed was the stage that I was performing on. The same thing you could do for yourself. So if you don't think you're being properly rated right now, maybe you're showing your game to the wrong people. Point number three, the topic here today is how to stop being underrated in life. Ask for more than what you are currently receiving. Notice that all three of these points that I gave you here today, you completely control these. These have nothing to do with what other people think about you. Asking for more than what you are currently receiving puts you on the same level as whatever you're asking or whoever you're asking. So for example, if somebody is at a way higher level than you in terms of success, but then you ask them to do something for you, or you offer them to do something for them, you put yourself on an equal plane with that person, at least at the moment that you're asking. Or if you ask for a higher position, then you're unconsciously or consciously letting that person know, hey, I'm worthy of this title. Now, as long as you can back it up, as long as you got some game to back up what you're asking for, then you become, you become basically a, uh, what do they call it? Like you basically saw the future. You predicted the future, okay? It's kind of like, I'll give you an example. Christopher Columbus. Everybody knows who Christopher Columbus is, right? He quote unquote discovered America. Now we know he didn't actually discover America, but y'all know who he is. They got a day named after him and everything. How did Christopher Columbus make it happen? Well, a lot of people don't know about Christopher Columbus is that he was not a sailor. Uh, he sailed, we know the story that in 1492, he sailed with three ships across the Atlantic Ocean and he discovered America. Now that technically he did land in what is now America, but Christopher Columbus himself was not a sailor. He hired a bunch of sailors to sail for him all he was was a merchant. He was a guy who like, you know, when y'all go in the mall and there's the people at the kiosks like selling t-shirts and cell phone cases, that was Christopher Columbus. All right, that's what he did for a living. He got friends, he made friends with the Queen of Spain, Queen Isabella, back in the day, and he asked her, and then he started talking himself up. He made people believe that he was the son of like some famous, some famous, uh, some people from the, what do they call it? The aristocracy from Portugal and he was in Spain. So he made up this whole story about his background and nobody checked his background. This is the point that I'm making. Christopher Columbus came into Spain and talked himself out like he was the son of some king or queen. Nobody knew if he was telling the truth or not, but guess what? Nobody gave it to him because he acted like it was real. So people just believed it. And then he met the queen of Spain. He asked her, can you finance this voyage? I want to find a route because he was trying to get to India, right? That's why he called the people he met Indians. We still, some people still call Native Americans Indians. People living in America are not Indians, they're Native Americans. But anyway, he thought he was going to India, so he didn't even know where he was going. He was going in the opposite direction of where he thought he was going. He thought he landed in India, he landed in the United States. You look on the map, those two different directions. He had no idea what he was doing. But because he believed in himself so much, when he asked the Queen of Spain to finance this voyage, she said yes, not because she checked his background, not because he had proven that he was, he was a documented, certified sailor, which he absolutely was not, not because he had any serious plans, because he didn't. Uh, again, he was trying to get to India, which is that way. He ended up in the United States, which is this way. So he obviously didn't know what he was doing. Why did that work? Because he asked for it. Why was Christopher Columbus able to get three ships financed by the Queen of Spain? She was like the president. Why would the president just give a random dude, imagine some dude working at the mall right now, walks out the mall, goes to Washington, D.C., asks the president, hey, can you finance a voyage? Give me three boats and pay for all these people and give me money, and I'm going to sail around the world and find some new land that nobody knows about. Is the president going to sign off on that? That just sounds crazy, right? That's what Christopher Columbus did. Right? That is exactly what happened. Go read the story. That's what he did. Now, why did that work? It worked. So I'm not telling you, don't laugh at it. That's, that worked. It worked because he believed it. And because he believed it, the queen believed it, she bought into his confidence, she financed the voyage, 
And here we are in the United States of America. How many years ago was that? The five, six hundred years ago. Just because he believed it. The fact that he was willing to ask is what legitimized Christopher Columbus. And this is the third point that I'm giving you. You must be willing to ask for what you want. Many times I get messages from people who tell me they are not quite you know, getting the respect or the, the recognition or you, maybe you're not getting, the, getting paid the way that you feel like you are worthy of based on your performance. And I often ask people, when's the last time you went to your boss or to you, one of your clients or whoever and say, you know what, I want more than what you're giving me. And most people don't have an answer. They never did it. They're complaining about what they're not getting, yet they never ask for anything more than what they're getting. And then they wonder why they're not getting it. All right? That doesn't make any sense when you actually lay it out. But a lot of people are doing this every, every single day. So the third point here is you must be willing to ask for what you want. In life, in the long run, everybody, you get what you expect and what you accept. In the long run of life, you always get what you expect and what you accept. And the only way you can start actually getting it is you must stop accepting the things that you don't want. What happens is people say, all right, well, Jerry, I expect to get more money, but then you keep accepting less money. So you can't have both. You got to pick one. All that being said, I'm going to recap these three points in a minute. But first, let me tell you how to get this book free. Like I promised, I would tell you this book right here is called The Mirror of Motivation, Self-Guide to Self-Discipline. It's the first book of mine that you should read. I've written 27. If you already read other books, it's all good. But if you're trying to figure out what to read next or some of you never read anything from me, read this one. You get this for free by going to mirrorofmotivation.com. Everybody who's listening to this, you have goals in life, which is great. You're willing to do the work. That's also great. The question you've never asked yourself, though, is who do I need to be? And that's the challenge. You haven't asked yourself that question. Who do I need to be? What kind of energy do I need to have? How do I need to walk into a room? How do I want people to feel when they hear my voice, when they see my face, when they listen to me talk? When I walk out of the room, what do I want people to say about me? What energy do you have? Who are you being? When you change who you're being, it will alter what you're doing, and it will change the results of what you are having, the end game. If you're looking for that. This book right here will give you the frameworks for you to answer the question, who do I need to be, which will change your actions, which will change your results. Get this book by going to mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is already free. You are not paying for the book. All you do is cover a small shipping charge. We will ship this book to you worldwide, anywhere that you live. Mirrorofmotivation.com. Let's take out the the. Mirrorofmotivation.com. Books paid for. You cover the shipping. When you're there, we got an option for you to get the four book, Bulletproof Bundle. That's why also my books on confidence, mental toughness, and personal initiative. On the next page, you're going to get an option to get my 250-page hardcover, Work on Your Game. Use the Pro Athlete Mindset to Dominate Your Game in Business, Sports, and Life, along with the Mental Workbook. The only thing you got to remember is mirrorofmotivation.com. So let me recap these points. Anybody got a question, go ahead and post it in the comment section. I'll address all questions as soon as I get done with this recap. Three ways to stop being underrated in life. Number one, toot your own horn. Sometimes in life it makes sense to be quiet. Other times in life you gotta be the loudest person in the room. Nobody's paying attention to you, you gotta make them pay attention by telling them what you're doing and telling them how good you are. That is not bragging, it's not being arrogant, it is called the news. Every day people watch the news and read the news, because why? They wanna know what's going on. So if you're the thing that's going on, you need to let people know. Number two, find a stage. Quickest way to change your status in life without changing your skill is to take the same skill and go do it in a different place because now you have a different audience, different people see you. When I was playing D3 college basketball, I was an okay D3 player. When I took those same skills and went to a professional basketball exposure camp, all of a sudden I was a professional basketball player. What changed? Nothing about my skill set. The only thing changed was the audience that I was playing in front of. Nothing else was different. Number three, ask for more than what you've been receiving. The act of asking puts you on an even plane with whoever you are asking. Christopher Columbus was not a sailor. He didn't even understand direction. He thought he landed in India, so he called people Indians, but he was actually in what we now know as America. The guy had no clue whatsoever, but everybody knows his name 500 years later. Why is that? Because he had the courage and the confidence to ask for what he wanted. Are you asking for what you want in life, or are you merely accepting what you don't want? That's a question that only you can answer. All that being said, let me address these questions. Let me see what we got in the comments. Ricky on... Facebook was good. He said, you've been grinding since I've been out of high school, thinking I can make it on the team now. I'm married and living at my own house. Facts. That's what's up, Ricky. Appreciate you. I'm glad you, I'm glad you uh, found me after all these years. Congratulations on your, your growth and success. Over here on Instagram, I think we only got, oh, Mustai just says, I remember reading Working Your Game in 2013, the e-version, Crazy Fire, but I think you're talking about Buy a Game. Mustai just think you're talking about Moose Idris. I don't know how to pronounce it now. I think you're talking about buy a game. Work on your game didn't come out until last year. You're talking about the free book that I put out back in the days. Eosorio, appreciate you. 
Adrian says, how often can I brag about something? You don't have to brag. You're just telling the news. Don't call it bragging because bragging has a negative connotation. Like you're just talking yourself up for no reason. The news is just letting people know what you've done. As often as you do things, that's how often you can tell people what you've done. If you did something, let people know. Richie Rich says, should a person brag when they have no game? But what are they going to brag about, Rich? <laughs> you ain't got no game. You ain't got nothing to brag about. And it's not bragging. It's just reporting the news. So don't look at it as bragging. I know that's the way that we are all socialized is bragging when you talk about yourself. It's not bragging if you're telling people what actually happened and they didn't know. If people don't know that you've written a book and then you told them that you wrote a book, is that bragging? No. It's letting them know that you wrote a book. It's bragging if you're just saying it just to, you know, po to pump up your own ego, but there's nothing for them to get. So if you can tell them, hey, I wrote a book, but here's how the book's going to help you. That's not bragging. That's news. Same way CNN every day tells you what happened. Not to make CNN look good. They're telling you so that you know what's going on. That's the way they frame it, and this is why you keep watching. All right, that's the reason why you tell people. So if you have no game, you ain't got nothing to brag about. So that's kind of impossible. Sports lover, is it a bad thing to brag about beating an amateur team who had a former pro player? Well, I mean, that's all subjective. I can't really answer. Is, it, is something a good thing or a bad thing? It's really up to your discretion. All that being said, everybody, mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is paid for. All you do is cover the shipping. Question, one more question. How do you deal with people? disagree with you hyping yourself up you don't have to deal with them they can disagree people are free to feel however they want to feel you ain't got to do nothing like ike says how can i balance having a positive perception from others and not giving my energy to those who kind of waste your time and energy well i don't think those are on opposite ends of a spectrum uh, having a positive perception from others is based on how you perceive yourself like ike so first of all it's not about other people you want other people to look at you positively, you got to look at yourself positively, and then you promote yourself positively, and then other people just believe what you said. That's just the way life works. People are not going to go into a deep analysis of you because they got, they'd rather be focused on themselves than focused on you. And when it comes to people who waste time and energy, well, once you identify somebody as a time waster, then you shouldn't have to balance them. You should get rid of them. So there's nothing to balance there. Get rid of those people. I talked about that in, uh, in this book identifying energy draining people when you get around people who are draining your energy and wasting your resources you shouldn't spend any more time with them if you do then that's your fault because you already know that they're the wrong people but you keep hanging with them so all that being said mirrorofmotivation.com the book is already paid for all you do is cover small shipping charge the self-guide self-discipline this is my first book of mine that you should read everybody that's a wrap i will be doing another live tomorrow tomorrow's friday yeah, i'll do another live tomorrow everybody have a great day we got a new program coming very, very, very soon. Everybody stay tuned. Just stay tuned to my story. Stay tuned to my email. If you're on my email list, if you're not, go to workonmygame.com. We out of here. Work on your game. We out. Dre all day.